News Bulletin. Developments of Tropical Storm Gabrielle and its impacts on the Atlantic Caribbean region. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Today is August 29th, 2025. In this special broadcast, we bring you the latest updates on tropical weather conditions across the Atlantic. Where a tropical disturbance shows strong signs of developing into a storm named Gabrielle. This system has become the focal point of attention for meteorological agencies as well as residents in the Caribbean and along the eastern coast of the United States. Over the past several days, weather in the Caribbean has shown complex developments. Sudden showers and thunderstorms have repeatedly struck many island nations, particularly the Cayman Islands, Antigua and Barbuda, and Trinidad and Tobago, in parts of Venezuela and Grenada. Heavy rains accompanied by strong winds disrupted traffic and raised the risk of localized flooding. While no major damage has been reported, these extreme weather events serve as an early warning for potentially more severe conditions in the coming days. Observation stations recorded scattered thunderstorms across the Caribbean in the past 24 hours, stretching from Cuba, Jamaica, and the Bahamas to coastal areas of Central America. These rains were unevenly distributed. Some areas experienced downpours, while others had only light showers. This instability increases the risk of flooding, landslides, and disruptions to daily life. Meanwhile, the greatest concern now lies in the eastern Atlantic, where a tropical wave has just emerged off the coast of West Africa and is moving offshore. This is often the starting point of a tropical cyclone with the potential to strengthen significantly. Based on global forecast models, the likelihood of this disturbance developing into a tropical depression, and possibly a tropical storm, within the next few days is considered high. The US and German icon models indicate that the system may intensify into a tropical storm as it passes near the Cabo Verde Islands. The European model is more cautious, suggesting only a tropical depression but still warning of strengthening winds by the weekend. Canada's model remains conservative, not yet confirming a well-organized tropical cyclone. Nonetheless, most meteorologists agree that as the system nears Cabo Verde, convective cloud bands will begin to spin more vigorously, forming a clear circulation, a strong indication of cyclone development. If this scenario unfolds, international weather agencies are expected to assign the official name Gabrielle making it the next named storm in this year's Atlantic hurricane season. As a reminder, September has historically been the peak of the Atlantic hurricane season. During this month, ocean surface temperatures across the basin reach their warmest levels, combined with high atmospheric moisture, creating ideal conditions for cyclone formation and intensification. Therefore, the potential emergence of Gabrielle at this time is consistent with long-observed climatic patterns. However, the storm's trajectory remains highly uncertain. Forecasters emphasize that the strength and position of the subtropical high-pressure system will play a decisive role. If this high remains strong and stable, it will act like a wall, steering Gabrielle westward toward the Caribbean. On the other hand, if the high weakens or shifts, the storm could curve north or northeast into the open Atlantic, reducing its chances of making landfall. Should Gabrielle track westward, several Caribbean nations will need to prepare for potential impacts. The Bahamas, Cuba, Jamaica, Haiti, and the Dominican Republic could be among the first to experience heavy rainfall. Forecast models show that northern parts of the Bahamas may receive 50 to 75 millimeters of rain over just a few days. Southern Florida in the United States is also in the potential impact zone with rainfall amounts projected at 100 to 125 millimeters, raising concerns of localized flooding in coastal cities. The Dominican Republic and Haiti, both characterized by mountainous terrain, face an elevated risk of flash floods and dangerous landslides if prolonged rainfall occurs. Across Central America, including Honduras, El Salvador, Nicaragua, and Costa Rica, thunderstorms are expected to intensify bringing potential landslides in hilly areas and flooding in low-lying regions. Notably, Texas in the United States has also been warned of heavy rain this weekend as a separate storm system moves inland. This adds further complexity to weather conditions in the southern U.S., 
as the region contends with local storms while also monitoring Gabrielle's potential path. Meanwhile, smaller island nations such as Barbados, Grenada, St. Lucia, and Puerto Rico are not excluded from the risk of tropical showers and thunderstorms. Although impacts there may be less severe, unstable weather still poses challenges to daily life and local economies. Ladies and gentlemen, the Atlantic hurricane season runs annually from June 1st to November 30th. Several storms and tropical depressions have already formed this year, affecting communities across the basin. Should Gabrielle be named, it would underscore that the 2025 season remains active and unpredictable. Meteorologists caution that from late August through mid-October, the Atlantic typically experiences a surge in tropical cyclone activity. Residents across the Caribbean, Central America, and the U.S. East Coast are strongly advised to closely follow official advisories issued by the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, as well as regional meteorological centers. From a climate science perspective, the continuous emergence of tropical waves from Africa into the Atlantic has long been documented. These disturbances, fueled by West African monsoonal winds, high humidity, and land ocean temperature contrasts, often serve as the seeds of major hurricanes. Historical examples include Hurricane Irma in 2017 and Hurricane Dorian in 2019, both originating from tropical waves before intensifying into catastrophic storms that devastated the Caribbean and the U.S. Therefore, monitoring these tropical waves from their earliest stages is crucial. Early detection and accurate forecasts enable authorities and communities to prepare more effectively, reducing the risks associated with extreme weather events. In light of these uncertainties, vigilance is essential. Governments, local authorities, and even individual households are urged to stay alert, ensuring adequate supplies of food, clean water, batteries, and emergency plans, along with readiness to evacuate if necessary are among the most practical steps to ensure safety. To recap, in the coming days, the potential storm Gabrielle will remain under close international observation, whether it intensifies into a powerful hurricane threatening the Caribbean, or curves harmlessly out to sea, remains to be seen, yet past experience reminds us that preparedness is always the key to minimizing impacts. In addition to the complex developments unfolding across the Atlantic and the Caribbean, Weather conditions in the United States and Canada during these final days of August are also drawing significant attention. In the southern United States, particularly in Texas, Louisiana, and Florida, a series of localized weather systems have produced heavy and prolonged rainfall, leading to flooding in many coastal cities. In Houston, meteorological agencies recorded an average of 120 millimeters of rainfall within just 48 hours disrupting transportation and daily life. Meanwhile, the southeastern United States, including Florida, Georgia, and the Carolinas, continues to experience unsettled conditions with scattered showers and thunderstorms. This is the result of a lingering tropical trough combined with moisture drawn in from the Atlantic. Such conditions increase the risk of localized flooding in major cities like Miami. Jacksonville, and Charleston, while also affecting maritime routes. The National Weather Service has urged residents to limit travel during peak rainfall periods to ensure safety. In contrast to the wet conditions in the south, the southwestern United States is struggling with extreme heat. In Arizona and Nevada, daytime temperatures have consistently exceeded 42 to 44 degrees Celsius, raising concerns about wildfires and placing stress on public health especially among the elderly and children. Health officials have warned of heatstroke risks, advising people to reduce outdoor activities during midday hours and stay hydrated. Further north, the Great Lakes region and the northeastern United States are seeing signs of transition as summer gradually comes to an end. Temperatures are dropping slightly, ranging from 18 to 25 degrees Celsius, with light scattered showers marking the seasonal change. States such as Michigan, Ohio, and New York are preparing for the shift from summer to autumn. However, meteorologists caution that sudden thunderstorms remain possible, with the potential to cause localized power outages. In Canada, weather patterns are showing sharp contrasts. 
the western provinces, including British Columbia and Alberta, continue to endure drought conditions, heightening the risk of large-scale wildfires. By contrast, the eastern provinces such as Ontario and Quebec are frequently affected by persistent showers and thunderstorms, which impact agriculture and daily activities. Temperatures across these regions remain mild, ranging from 15 to 22 degrees Celsius, generally favorable, though still carrying the threat of weather extremes. In the far north of Canada, including Nunavut and the Northwest Territories, early season cold winds have begun to settle in, with nighttime lows dropping to just 5 to 8 degrees Celsius in several areas. This marks the first signs of the approaching harsh winter presenting challenges for local residents as well as industrial activities such as mining and transport. Overall, the weather picture across North America highlights stark contrasts. The southern United States grapples with flooding risks. The western states endure dangerous heat. And Canada enters a transitional phase with diverse climate conditions. When combined with the potential development of tropical storm Gabrielle, these dynamics paint a complex weather outlook underscoring the importance of preparedness and vigilance from both the public and authorities. That concludes this edition of our News Bulletin. We will continue to monitor developments closely and bring you the latest updates in upcoming broadcasts. Thank you for watching, and we wish you a safe and peaceful day.